In the coral reefs too, winds of hope are also blowing. Alerted by the critical situation they have reached, scientists from all around the world have set to work to save the coral reefs. In Australia, where we find the Great Barrier Reef, the largest coral reef in the world, investigators are raising the alarm worldwide, warning of the deterioration due to the general warming of our atmosphere. But while the macro measures are taken at world level and until they produce results, Australian investigators are undertaking practical initiatives to minimize the damage to coral communities. Based on the data obtained from the meticulous research projects, the scientific community provides the government agencies with the knowledge that marks the new laws for the care and protection of the coral reefs. These laws are of immediate application, and here in Australia, they are achieving encouraging results. Once again, education and awareness raising are central in this new conservationist spirit. Educating the tourists that come to the Great Barrier Reef means recruiting defenders of the coral community. The visitors are shown how to behave in the world of the corals, so they will not damage them, but what is more important, they are made to understand, value and admire the fragile world of the reef, knowing that anything we admire, we love, and anything we love, we defend and conserve. This new trend, which we could sum up as educate in order to conserve, can boast an entire army of volunteers in Australia. In Cairns, in northeast Australia, the biologist Paddy Colwell gives free classes on the coral reef. What is important is that people should admire the reef, understand how it works, the role it plays, and how terribly fragile it is. The rest is a growing chain of admirers of this submerged world. People who add their grain of sand to the world conservation of the reefs. The great influx of international tourists to the Great Barrier Reef means that the message of people like Paddy Colwell is spread all around the world. It is a new way of making people aware and the best way to do so. Following the theory, the realities experienced beneath the water, the threatened species surround you, you can touch them, marvel at them. Learning about how the reef functions is important. Seeing its species leads you to admire it. But it is here, feeling and touching it firsthand, that you truly understand its intrinsic importance. After these experiences, when the divers leave Australia, they take with them lasting memories of the reef as a world which is vital to conserve. On the other side of the world, from the Great Barrier Reef, another desperate fight to save marine ecosystems is winning important battles. On board an old sailing ship, Ana Cañadas and Ricardo Sagarminaga have for years been fighting for the conservation of the Mediterranean Sea and its species.
Together they form ALNITAC, an NGO for the study and conservation of Mediterranean ecosystems. The task they face will only be successful if they can manage to make the populations that live from the Mediterranean aware of the need for conservation. It is a complicated mission, but Alnitak has found powerful allies, the cetaceans. With the help of the dolphins and whales, Ricardo and Ana are managing to get their message across to society. The dolphins and the charismatic Tofte Vag, the organization's ship, have become excellent messengers to get across to the public information about the marine environment and the problem it faces. Over 10 years of research and planning are starting to bring results and they are now much closer to achieving their goal of a marine reserve for cetaceans in the Alboran Sea. Much of the success of Alnitak is due to their approach of dividing their work into two major areas of action. On the one hand, they plan and develop research work aimed at alerting the scientific community to the problems of the Mediterranean. And on the other hand, at the same time, they develop social communication strategies that make the public, the coastal communities that live from the sea and its riches, aware of the moral and practical need to conserve the marine ecosystem with each and every one of its species. The cetaceans, especially the dolphins and pilot whales, play an essential role in this second objective. We all feel attracted by these intelligent, sociable animals. They are therefore efficient emissaries of all the problems suffered by their environment. Undoubtedly, we will be more sympathetic to the problems of the dolphins or pilot whales like these than by those suffered by gorgonians, gobies or jellyfish. But as the problems of the ecosystems affect all their species, these privileged messengers can raise awareness among the public and this benefits all the creatures of the sea. Once again, new strategies are bringing global results. These emissaries of the sea have become the hope of thousands of species. It is no longer a question of protecting a certain animal, but rather of saving entire ecosystems. And in some cases, as in the Mediterranean Sea, it is specific species that hold the key to the hearts and minds of human societies. <laughs> 